thank you so much, Imad, um, for the uh, introduction and also for inviting me to be part of this, this event. Um, I'm delighted to be speaking to you all today from um, wherever you are. Um, I'd say uh, one of the things I said when I came on the call this morning, it's the earliest I've been dressed in quite some time. And it's one of those things that I think we're all getting used to. It's a very different way of working. Um, and I think one of the things I do in my role is, is look at how we stay connected. Uh, I know over the next couple of days, you're going to be speaking to a number of my colleagues um, in different parts of the world who are part of a group that I work with to look at how do we work together more effectively to be able to look at growth, drive growth, um, and transform the way that we, that we go to, to market and the way that we, we look at um, our, our clients and how we develop our business. And one of the things I'd like to ask you to do over the next two days is, is keep an open mind. Um, I, I know that myself, I, I've often thought that, that I, I know the answer to something um, and, and I stay closed, but actually there's opportunity all over the place at the moment that we had never expected to be able to see. So please do keep an open mind and listen to what you're hearing from some of our experts and really challenge your thinking as we go, as we go forward. May I have the next slide, please? So when we think about um, a sustainable future, I, I know picking up some of the themes that have been said already, um, when we think about COVID-19 and the impact it's had, there's been a lot of speculation about the, that causing the death of globalization. And certainly from my perspective, working globally with our 130 firms, um, it's, it's about, um, we've seen a real retrench into how do we look after our own businesses? How do we look after our nations? We've seen the closing down of borders, um, and, and a real protection of our, of our nations. I think, but one of the things that I'm also seeing is that real accelerator of change around those areas that we have underlying trends already. So one of the things that I saw in the, in the initial um, video about the vaccine development, that has come about as a, as a, as a result of um, effective collaboration across, across countries, across businesses. Um, and I hope that that signals a trend towards more of that collaboration to be able to um, drive real change across, across the G20 and across, across our world. We've also seen um, a change in trade flows and the way that the, um, the growth markets in Asia are really driving some of the investment and what, will that, what impact that will have as we continue to go forward. Um, I know certainly from my perspective when working with countries like Ireland and Singapore, those are, those are our territories where they are very reliant on global trade and how are they going to drive more of that how can we look to to that as a, um, a more accelerator of that change towards that that trade flow um, the other thing i've seen and i think this is a great example of it is much more um, dependence on virtual meetings myself i used to travel a lot uh, around the world i'm probably out of the country a hundred days a year but going to various conferences meetings and actually what we've seen is the, the real um, value of virtual. How do we make that work for us? I don't think it, for, for me personally, it won't replace um, a face-to-face -face interaction because you need that human contact, but actually a lot of what we have been doing in the past face-to-face -face can be done virtually. And the final thing I think I've seen a lot of in terms of that acceleration of change is more about the gig economy. Um, we've, we've, it's been a trend for some time, but actually because of the environment in which we're in, but because of the lack of being able to move and the need for flexibility um, in, our, in our working patterns, um, I think that's introduced a lot more of that um, need for flexibility in our business structures. How do we encourage our employees to be able to take a more um, flexible approach to the way they work? And I think that's much more about them, hopefully the way we'll see. So hopefully for me, not the death of globalization, more of an acceleration of change of some of those underlying trends that we are seeing. And go to the next slide, please. So one of the things at Grant Thornton, um, we are a global uh, network of firms and, and actually our, uh, our goals are very similar to that of what we've seen in the G20 about creating this collaboration um, uh, between countries to be able to drive a more sustainable and inclusive world. And that's very much what we look for um, as well in, in Grant Thornton. And how do we take that external perspective to be able to look at how do we uh, change what we're doing internally? I'm picking up a lot of the themes that um, Imad has talked about in his introduction. I think that the sustainability issue and the challenge we have about how we drive that agenda 
certainly um, it's not just around um, saving the planet. It's actually also what, something that um, our investors are seeking, your stakeholders, your shareholders, um, and, and the funds, I think BlackRock announced yesterday that they are going to look at their, um, their investment decisions based on how much of a focus there is on sustainable development. So sustainable disruption, what does that mean for you? How can, that, how can you consider that in your agenda, in your strategy? Uh, and how do you help to meet the needs of, of your, um, your shareholders, your stakeholders? When we talk about technology, I know this is going to be a topic that comes up a lot over the next two days, and we've talked about it quite a bit already. Um, but thinking about with the impact of AI, the impact of automation, the, the risks that come, the cyber risks that are exposing our businesses. How do you protect your business, um, but also look at how do you develop it? How can you turn that potential disruption into opportunity? And a lot of this is about how do we um, uh, for, for, foresee what's going to happen, which is not, no, it's definitely not possible. None of us saw COVID-19 kind of about to happen, but um, it's a how do you try and get ahead of the curve and think um, laterally about, about your opportunities that, that are aware of there. Um, when we look at political and regulatory disruption, we see that in the news every day in, in local markets. Um, and I think one of the things, certainly from our perspective in the business in which we operate, we see a lot around audit reform and what that means and how we're going to operate, how we're going to work with our clients. Um, and, and how do we address the issues around quality and the demands of our clients and the, the regulators and, and meeting those, those needs. So the, for us, it's about how do we address our standard processes, procedures, how we've always done things to address that and really be ahead of the curve to be able to meet the needs of our clients. And that's something I think is, is key to have in, in terms of your agendas. When we look at economic disruption, as we said, it, it, you know, we don't really know how much this um, the COVID-19 pandemic is going to affect. We don't really know what the final um, landscape will look like. Um, but how do we get ahead of that? How do we um, continue to look to where, where finance is possible, where the investment opportunities are? And how do we work together on some of those opportunities? When we look at this demographic disruption, um, I, I was thinking today about this morning about um, the fact that actually in 20 years time, we're going to have a uh, in, in the UK, we're going to have uh, a group of people who have missed out on, on essentially two years of, of education because we've had so much disruption in the way that schools have been running because we've had the lockdown here in the UK. What might that have um, for in terms of future impact? Um, but we also have the, the challenge around creating more diversity. And, and also aging populations. What does that mean for, for the um, markets that we're targeting um, and the opportunities that we, we see? And then finally, the workforce disruption. As I mentioned about the gig economy, there, there's much more of a drive around flexible working. What does that mean? What does that mean to do for your productivity and the way that you en encourage and motivate your staff? How do we look at that? What, what the leadership requirements are? Um, certainly when um, over the last year I've had to work very differently with my teams to be able to drive um, motivation and engagement because I'm not seeing them um, and, and you're not having that face to face contact. So what does it mean to be able to create that um, environment of uh, drive and ambition um, when we're going to be um, not, so, not so much face to face and in the same environments with each other? So for us, looking at those, all of those external perspectives and when we're looking to create our strategy, when we're looking to create that more sustainable world, are critical in, in our thinking. Maybe I'll go to the next slide, please. And picking up the, the four agents of change that um, Imad mentioned in, the, in his opening address, I, I, I won't go over them all in, in detail, but one of the things that we do in, in Grant Thornton is we do a, um, a leading uh, survey every twice a year to 10,000 businesses in 29 um, countries. And we look at um, the, the leading mid-market companies. And one of the things that we, we picked up um, pre-pandemic was this, uh, which looks to this point around moving to resilience and agility, was that um, before the pandemic, uh, they, no one had anticipated or was ready for how we might have to change at speed. Um, the, the overwhelming view of the mid-market businesses we were talking to was that it would re require 12 months to be able to review um, and be able to address uh, ch changes in their strategy. So 12 months to be able to address any disruptors hitting the market. 
um, obviously that wasn't the case. And, and, and the past PIP strategy, strategy review has been on an eight month cycle, roughly, was, was what we saw from our, from our research. Um, and that's not something that can be sustainable. We need to be much more agile and be able to, uh, to move, to look at the market, to um, change the way we work in a much more um, fluid way. Um, the, the talking about the um, sustainability and the push for the green recovery, um, like 61% of the people that we speak to um, agree that, that the public expectation post COVID is going to rise but, um, uh, after uh, the, the pandemic has ended. So what can we be doing to address that? How do we meet the needs of the public um, and uh, your stakeholders, your shareholders, your leadership teams and your employees? I think it's something that certainly I've seen for myself um, as, a, as, a, as a consumer, but also as someone who's part of an organisation. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what that means for the future. Um, and making sure that our businesses are future proof in terms of needing, meet, meeting the needs of our sustainability goals. I think that finally I have to pick up the point around um, technology and it's, it's not surprising to see that 45.6% um, of businesses that we've been surveying uh, over the, in the last, um, uh, last year in 2020 have said there's going to be much more of a move towards technology and transformation. Um, and a look to how technology can help for organisational um, recovery and what, how, they, how they embed that. And I think over the next two days, you're going to hear a lot. I know there's a panel around this and I know, I know some, some of the countries you'll be hearing from have had a particular push around technology and how they can use that around AI and automation um, and, and how we can make the most of that. Um, next slide, please. So um, thinking about your role as leaders, um, one of the things I think is, is critical is about your level of curiosity and how you inspire your, your teams around you. So for me, great leaders ask great questions and it's not about asking closed questions and it's not necessarily asking the ones that say, how do we drive fantastic revenue or growth? It's actually more about asking um, more open questions about what, what are the market opportunities that we've never looked at? If we could do one thing differently, what would it be? It's about feeling, uh, giving your, your people and your other, your leadership teams empowerment to be able to think outside the box and to think differently. Um, I think we see that from some of the organizations that have disrupted the market. Um, we always use Uber and um, Airbnb as, as examples, but, but how do we really think laterally? Um, and keep that, as I said at the beginning, keep an open mind and really think that curiosity don't shut down first off. And, I've, you know, we've talked a lot about the, the external drivers and those, those impacts that can happen onto your business. How do we, how do we consider those? Um, and, and also thinking about the internal enablers, what, what can we do to change? I, I found in the past that quite often we will tend to focus much more on the internal enablers and what internal looks like and less about the external. But it's also we tend to stick within what we know. How do we ask great questions? How do we involve people who have different perspectives? Um, I have conversations sometimes with my next door neighbor's three year old daughter who gives me um, some of the questions she asks that really challenges my thinking. I'm not suggesting that we have three year olds on our on our executive board, but it's thinking, how do I involve someone who's got a different perspective, who can bring challenge the my, my status quo, who can challenge my thinking? So what can you do to create that environment where you're really inspiring uh, creativity and really helping your, your business, your, your leaders, your, your employees feel part of your future business? When we're thinking about growth, we don't necessarily, it's not necessarily going to come from the traditional places. We've seen it in the past. It's going to be different. So how do we create that environment to inspire people to be part of that change? <clears throat> 